This is glycine, which has a hydrogen side chain. And this is alanine, which has a methyl side chain. Let's draw the mechanism for a reaction that can occur. Well, what type of functional group is this? And this is, so let's draw the mechanism for the reaction that can occur between the amine end of the alanine and the carboxylic acid end of the glycine. Good, can't forget that charge, that's a good picture. We need a proton transfer, if possible, to make this into a better leaving group. Sometimes we, we are kicking off just neutral oxygens nowadays, but it's better if we can protonate it first on that species. Very good. Good. This is just a very typical example of a nucleophilic attack on a carboxylic acid or acid derivative, like we've been learning before. What type of functional group is this? Carboxylic acid. 
right? And what type of functional group is this? Are amines nucleophiles? Yes. So this makes sense. I briefly mentioned last time that this is a little complicated because there's some other reactions that might also happen here. There's also some acid-base reactions that could happen, but it's not, we, we don't need to go into that right now. One reaction that can happen here is that the amine can attack the carbonyl nucleophilically, and then when the carbonyl reforms, that kicks off the OH group. And what type of functional group did we create here? An amide. That's right, an amide. Now, the reason this is interesting is that we started with two separate amino acids. We started with a glycine and an alanine, but now we have two connected amino acids. Now we have connected amino acids. Here's the glycine, here's the alanine. By the way, remember, it's always a good idea to keep labeling the alpha carbons that have the side chains. So I'm going to label the alpha carbons with the side chains, which are the way that we identify who the glycine is, who the alanine is. Why is it interesting when we link together amino acids? Because that's what proteins are. Proteins and peptides are just linked together amino acids. Uh, proteins and peptides are just linked together amino acids. The word peptide basically means protein. Peptide is basically a synonym for a protein. And that means that both peptides and proteins are just linked together amino acids. So here we have two separate amino acids, but here we have what would be called a dipeptide. It's called a dipeptide because it's a peptide, a very, very small protein consisting of two amino acids. Now, in reality, most proteins might have hundreds or thousands of amino acids, but we're just getting started here uh, showing how we can put two of these together. So how are two amino acids connected in a protein? They're connected by an amide bond. The connection between amino acids in a peptide is an amide bond. That's one reason we've been spending so much time thinking about amides, because that's the connection between amino acids in a peptide. <coughs> Another name for this bond here is a peptide bond. It's called a peptide bond because it's the bond that's holding the peptide together. But we can see now that peptide bonds are amide bonds. Peptide bonds are amide bonds. The bonds that hold together the separate amino acids in the peptide are amide bonds. It's always important to make sure you're getting the right number of hydrogens. Notice that this nitrogen in this amide bond, it makes sense for it to have one hydrogen because it's bonded to two carbons. And normally a neutral nitrogen has three bonds overall. We saw that the nitrogen started with two hydrogens, but then it deprotonated. So this is the correct number of hydrogens. Very often I find that I get sloppy and I forget to put this hydrogen in. But we should really put this hydrogen in to show why this is a neutral nitrogen. Now this is serine. Serine has a side chain that looks like this. Suppose we wanted to make a tripeptide. Well, if we wanted to make a tripeptide, we could take this dipeptide and have the serine attack it. How would the serine attack it? Well, it would be the same story as before. This amine could attack this carboxy group, and then we could, again, have a proton transfer and a, re and a reformation. Well, you can see that if you're going to make an octopeptide or a nonopeptide, you don't want to have to draw the mechanism every time. That would get tedious. So we should be able to draw what the tripeptide looks like without going through that whole mechanism. So now let's just show what would this tripeptide look like if they had the serine. If you want to, you can just tag the serine on to what you already have on your paper. So let's try writing what would this look like after the serine has attacked. We don't really have time to go through the mechanism all over again, but we should be able to show what this tripeptide would look like after the serine has joined. We know this is going to be a nucleophilic attack, so who's the L group going to be? Oh, the OH right there. So I'm just going to go ahead and erase that, because that's going to be gone. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be replaced by our nitrogen nucleophile. And we know that the nitrogen after it attacks is going to have to deprotonate. Mm -hmm. 
So the nitrogen will have one fewer hydrogen than when it started at the end. And now we can just do what you did and draw in the rest of the series. So it's important to know the mechanism that created this peptide or amide bond, but it's also important to be able just to draw the amide bond without having to go through the mechanism every single time, because that would be too tedious if we have to put together eight amino acids in a row. So now we have what's called a tripeptide. It's always very useful to locate the amide linkages. The amide linkages are where we go from one amino acid to another. So here's a squiggle that shows the boundary between the glycine and the alanine. This is the boundary between the glycine and the alanine. And we should put in a squiggle that shows the boundary between the alanine and the serine. Good. Here's the boundary between the alanine and the serine. 